So I wanted to talk about some of the commentary that revolves around Phoebe Filo at the moment. Um, this Iman interview has gone viral once again. It's from Sway from, I think, a few years ago, to be completely honest. It's not, it's not a recent interview. But for some reason, this interview has gone viral again for this particular clip. Um, Iman basically speaks about why she doesn't buy um, Celine or why she doesn't support Phoebe Philo in general, right? And most of it has to do with the fact that Phoebe has a very particular specification when it comes to having models on her runway. Like she didn't want, you know, even though she was purported to be that the woman for, you know, that a woman that designed for every woman, right, around the world, she clearly only had a very particular type of vision of woman that she wanted to represent on the runway. And it was usually very European, very Caucasian and very slim, right but for some reason it resonated with people and i don't know why that is i feel like it maybe is a reflection on how people view stuff in general because i think to myself a lot of the times like why do a lot of women out there seem to be avid followers and you know kind of buyers of fitness influencers who clearly look like they were professional athletes when they were younger maybe they did ballet gymnastics um weightlifting or something and then they also happen to be super cute. So it kind of made it easy to kind of get into modeling. But I wouldn't think that their, you know, nutrition plans or their workouts would actually work for the every girl because they have a really good athletic base. But I always wonder why do regular girls like to follow people? Like that? It really didn't really, it didn't really make sense to me. But again, it's women's business, not my business. And I think the same thing can be said for this. Um, Phoebe Fowler had a very specific image of a woman, even at Chloe, even at Celine. And it was very white, very European, but women all around the world resonated with it because maybe that was a something to kind of aim for, even though it didn't really represent them. And then maybe down the line, towards the end of her time at Celine, she started to get her runway to be a bit more reflective of her fan base because the, her fans were worldwide. It wasn't just white women buying her stuff, it was everybody, which is the only odd thing that I never really liked about designers. Like, I don't mind if a designer only has people on their runway that actually buy their things. But I don't like the idea of just ignoring a huge chunk of your fan base. It happened a lot with Demna in the beginning. When Demna was doing Vetemar, it was incredibly white for some reason. Even at the, at the very beginning of fucking Vetemar, the only people that were fucking wearing it, really, right, that were going out of their way to fucking buy it, were black people and Asian people. You, the only people you see wearing that shit on the daily. I actually saw real life people wearing the fucking metal logo hoodie the massive bomber jacket the reconstructed one you see actual asian kids around even where the area that i live in walking around wearing that stuff when it first dropped so it was kind of insulting to not have us and them represented on the runway when we're clearly the market that's buying them the most and over time them kind of learned and obviously started to include some models in there to kind of appease and kind of tick some boxes and shit. And now it's something that he kind of does um, going forward, whatever. But the Celine thing is interesting because it clearly was a shift. You clearly saw when she got called out, Phoebe, she definitely did change. Towards the end, you saw a lot more, you know, blacks and Asians and whatever else, non-whites on the runway. But I thought what Iman had to say about it was fucking hilarious. And again, this clip has gone viral on my side of social media. But it's interesting because it also kind of makes me, reminds me of the whole kerfuffle around Daniel Lee over at fucking Protega Veneta when he was there and the alleged things that he said about you know us blacks and that didn't really affect anything so i don't really think this will change people's idea or impression on phoebe Fowler, especially with her namesake label about to launch and her return to fashion happening i think in september or something right soon or maybe it's, yeah it's happening this shit it's happening soon in paris fashion week what, what, what i'm talking about so that's happening soon so that show is going to be chocker blocked people are going to be fooling over themselves to cover it and most likely she's going to have one of the first models come out be black right just to kind of settle the nerves and get people back on side again so it's not going to do anything but let's hear anyway what the legend um iman has to say about phoebe philo and fucking celine in general let's hear uh oops one of the designers was a one of the designers was a, a woman called philo who did celine Every woman, <laughs> black, white, woman every age that Celine. I know of, coveted Celine bags. Mm -hmm. You know, it was always, you know, weightless, weightless, mm -hmm. weightless. Those bags. And so Philo said, uh, am I going to be forced to use black? She's never used black models. So she said, am I going to be forced to use black models? I said, Jesus. no. I mean, you, there's got to be the right black model for you. You know, there can't be no black model that's not, not, not right for you. 
And uh, but just by she saying that, yeah. I said, and I did this I, I, because I've done it, but I never said it, you know, publicly. I said for the action of she saying that she has to have the choice not to use black models. That's why I have never bought a Celine bag. Oh. Mm, wow. She has the right to her runway. And I have a right to my pocketbook. Absolutely. Mm. So you want, and I, so I never owned a Celine bag. Big up, fucking Iman. And that's true. And to me, that kind of reminds me a lot of my experience with fucking pilots, which is really pathetic and honestly probably makes me look worse. Makes me look, yeah, probably makes me look worse than whatever they had probably done. But there was a period in time in my life when I jumped on the whole palace wave kind of early because I was plugged into sidewalk forum and I was skating a lot back in the day and I was really a part of the scene skating a lot and all this fucking shit right um you know re-watching kids a million times and old zoo york tapes and shit and going to fucking um events at fucking slam city skates and that was still around and just being a fucking skate rat so i was plugged in a lot so i kind of found out about paris when it first launched like you know at the moment it kind of launched and i jumped on this straight away i was like oh shit it's our fucking supreme it's a european supreme european supreme boom 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 um and then i remember buying the first couple of t-shirts they put out the chanel one i bought the versace medusa head one inspired one i bought one of the early trifect t-shirts when they used to actually print them on t-shirts that were inside out sort of thing i bought them on those and then i remember being plugged in right and i remember one day <laughs> when i was working in 1948 store one of the guys involved with palace or one of the founders was there and i was being kind of a fanboy wanting to get more information about what was going on and shit and maybe i should have realized because maybe because we're maybe the similar age i don't know what it is but I just got vibed out instantly, right? I kind of said something that, oh, yeah, you're going to make hats or something, right? Because I wanted a hat or something and they didn't have hats yet at the time. And then he just like completely like dismissed me in a way that was super, super, super sad. Like I felt really offended and I felt even more offended because I remember looking at him thinking, hold on, like you're not even from ends and you have this whole persona and whole this aesthetic with your brand where you try and act like you're from ends but you guys are from west or wherever the fuck you're from right um this ironic wear use of fucking wearing the sovereign and wearing fucking reeboks and loafers with tracksuit bottoms i just started immediately thinking to myself how dare you of all people try and sun me right i just it, it, but it was one of those things you remember sometimes when you're out and you bump into somebody and you have a bad old you know interaction with them and then you wish you said things i started to think of all these things i wanted to say then i thought some settle down just vote with your pocket vote with your wallet and from that moment on i never wore palace again never even to this day there is i saw a new lookbook out at the moment that features this amazing bomber jacket this amazing almost jamiroquai inspired hat that i would obviously wear this cool belt never gonna wear it because of that one bad interaction i had with them and i think more people should do that when it comes to designers and fashion because i feel like, like a lot of these motherfuckers really have an odd way of treating fans and maybe customers which has always interested me this kind of ambivalence disregard almost coldness that they have with people who communicate with them in real life when they make these products right because it resonates with you it touches you you want to say something and again maybe i came across rude maybe i didn't come across right maybe i said the wrong words who knows i could be i it could be perfectly in the wrong with this and it could be something i've just made up in my head but from that moment i never wore the brand again and i think i've probably got a couple more of those in my head but i just silently kind of you know my little silent fucking lame protest against it which didn't work because you know they're fucking booming right now right they've got stores all over the fucking place and they're selling stuff by the fucking truckload so clearly my little speech doesn't really matter but i think it's important to vote with your wallet it really is important to only support people that you legitimately connect with that you legitimately like and not support the others that you don't because there are plenty of people out there who would love your business who are doing great work and would probably treat you with respect um or maybe at least indulge you which is probably what all i wanted then right just a little bit of like indulgement and kind of you know to kind of make me feel seen not completely dismiss me and kind of act like i was a shit stain on the bottom of your fucking loafers or some shit absolutely crazy but since that time i've never fucking bought anything for palace again which is really hard at the time because i remember at the time 
it might have been around the same time that they sort of like started to blow up so stuff started to get really good but i've never been able to look at the stuff the same ever again and to be honest it does say it's probably a little bit more related more to my overall experience in the skate scene in london anyway you know it's full of a lot of cunts to be fair unfortunately um i've never really resonated well with them and there is always a bit of an attitude with them anyway because that's how they police and kind of keep their scene you know somewhat pure and whatever it may be but for me i've just you know i'm not about the licky ass thing i can't be bothered really um and it just never really vibed me the wrong way but when it comes to this stuff with chanel and stuff sorry with um phoebe philo and iman i wonder if this will put more focus and more light again on the whole daniel lee thing because that to me is still really perplexed me how he was almost able to quote unquote get away with it not because i want to cancel people i'm not in that business at all i don't give a fuck like that but more so because there are people online especially black people who love to do the whole online activism shit right and try to counsel people from dumb shit they said slip ups the wrong opinion but when you get an actual account from somebody who's black at the time who's black i remember right i think it's that guy um pisano luis pisano on twitter who shared that allegedly daniel lee got fired from bottega because he said some n-word shit um insult against somebody in a meeting or something and he put it out there and you know you would imagine people would probably rally behind that and be like okay cool we're not fucking fucking with this guy anymore but it didn't happen he kind of just got swept under the rug i even saw some people basically saying don't believe the rumors that probably didn't happen people were, like really fighting for his love in a weird way which is fucking bizarre and then when it came to the burberry show you saw the entirety of fucking you know black britain right the, the trendy people in britain who are smashing it um from our scene essentially on the front row of the shows right you saw all of them there so all of this activism people do online and trying to do all this rah-rah protesting shit when you actually are presented with an opportunity to do so you don't because everyone wants to go to fashion shows everyone wants to be at these shows everyone wants an invite at these coveted front rows you don't want to be left out so in my opinion I think you should just ignore all that shit and just do you because clearly these people don't give a fuck, right? Because when it comes to actually doing something, they would rather just attend the shows. Again, big up my guy fucking DWE, big up Kano, two of the biggest and legendary fucking MCs and rappers to come out of East London, you know, forever. DWE probably my favorite MC of all time, but it's still pretty crazy to see that after all those rumors that came out no one really did anything it didn't really hurt Daniel Lee in any way shape or form he went to Burberry like nothing happened and he had the whole of Call Black Britain out there at his show at Burberry in London Fashion Week and nothing ever happened um but people are making a big stink out of you know Celine saying sorry Phoebe Fowler saying she doesn't want black models she just wouldn't be forced to use them so I don't think anything's actually going to change to be fair um it's going to be the way it is people are still going to queue up to buy Phoebe Fowler when it does eventually drop um people are still buying old Celine now so whatever people say online um trying to be activists trying to basically counter people it's all full of shit it's all selective politicking and you should just ignore it and just do what you do really that's the message of my little rant there that's the message of my rant